darn it. Darn, darn, darn. Okay. Already screwed that one up. Okay. Sorry. You see what? This is what happens when I come right in from the Gamerette. Well, hello everyone who I assume is probably here from the Gamerette channel. Hello all you curious folks, all you happy nerds out there. Thank you guys so much for coming to this Brain Numbs live stream. Oh, there we go. Greggles, I know you're so excited. Thank you guys all so very, very, very much for coming. Uh, give me one second. Um... For some reason, going channel to channel is a lot harder than I expected. So it always takes a hot second for me to figure things out. But that's fine. It's whatever. It's fine. But it looks like everything's working. Guys, hello. Hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, assuming things are working. If not, put down in the comment box below if something is breaking. Because we all know that happens all the time. And we can fix it together. Speaking of things we need to fix together, let's get right on into this. Um, particularly because... Uh, I love, I love the, uh, I love kind of the snowballing effect that we're kind of having, um, from the Gamerette channel coming onto Brain Noms and particularly using every Monday as a way to say, okay, what's happening in the next week and what can I learn to do and maybe what is one possible way I could challenge myself to be a bit more, a bit better than I was last week. Who knows? I don't know. That's something I go, I, that's something I have been trying to challenge myself uh, going into every new week where I say, I didn't do this last week, I want to do it this week, how do I challenge myself to try something new? And it can be as simple as calling my congressman, it could be as simple as signing a petition, it could be as big as showing up to the front door with a giant group of people to your senator's office. It's kind of cool to see all the, th all the things that people can come together to do and the ways you can grow and challenge yourself with it. And I, 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 that gets me really excited. So I am wearing a blazer, of course. Had to get real professional for y'all. That's right. That's part of it's part of the setup. It's part of the movie magic that happens here at the Brain Gnomes channel. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the wonderful comments. Let's jump right on into it because there are a few things I want to hit on, and then I'm gonna have a moment of being of uh, internal debate that I've been having with myself that I really want to ask your guys' genuine opinion on. Thank you. Well, I think you. I can't see you other than your. Screen, other than your uh, profile picture, but I'm sure you look lovely too. Thank you for the fact that I literally—it's just—it's just a blazer. It's not—it's not any. There's nothing. There's nothing fancy happening. Thank you, though. I'm honored. So first things first. Again, uh, the way I'm going about this so far, um, and what I would like to do a little later on is when I have a bit more time to prepare these episodes and prepare these streams. And a live stream is always tough because you have to really have everything prepared beforehand. You can't kind of wing it so much as you do with like a regular video because you know in that case you can edit it what i'm literally doing is for those of you guys who haven't done this highly recommend it i've signed up for the indivisible guide newsletter so they've signed they send out a weekly newsletter it's like every sunday night or monday morning basically everything that's happening this week and stuff to keep your eye on and like how you can get involved it's really cool and it has all these really awesome links that link to uh, different like toolkits they have like how to call people what to say uh, how to how to deal with a town hall that's the thing like I'm I'm challenging myself most on and one of the things I'm gonna be uh, writing about and doing a, a piece on brain noms this week um, let's see um Greggles I did actually see that my state does require uh, that was a question actually this is a great comment um, last week I asked uh, if I wanted to call people is it okay if I record them on the phone not just a private citizen but particularly like a public figure um, or their office and their representatives can I record that it turns out Different states are, are different. Everyone has to know they're being recorded. You don't necessarily need consent. Uh, but my state, and there's like another set of like, I want to say 12 other states, uh, that require you to have all, everybody's consent to record them. Which I understand. Um, kind of a bummer that I would have to go through that because I feel like that just provides people the opportunity to say no. But I do understand that I do believe that like everyone should have the right to say no, I don't want to be recorded. Okay, fine. In which case, that's totally fine. If we do continue to do calls uh, here, chances are because we do these uh, live streams late at night, no one's going to pick up. So <laughs> we'll end up doing those calls anyway, um, which I do think is actually kind of fun and nice. Um, and in which case, I'm sure at some point, I'll probably do a set in which I do call people during the middle of the day, and I can just record them and make sure I get their consent beforehand anyways. Um, <laughs> oh, Haven, thank you. I know it does. It makes me look so put together. Um, first things first. Okay, so going through this... Um, Going through this uh, newsletter, again, highly recommended if you guys get it. It's literally been the, one of the biggest ways I've kept track of all the things coming up during the week, and it really helps me to pay attention uh, to research things coming up. So, for example, if one of the big issues coming, coming out is like, 
an executive order on LGBT rights, right? Um, I can say, oh, all right, this week I'm going to make sure that all of the news I get inundated with, I want to make sure I pay attention specifically to, you know, LGBT rights. Or it could be healthcare, gun rights, literally anything. So first things for speaking of healthcare, healthcare is one of the biggest ones that's happening. Um, they, uh, there's always been kind of this debate of like, oh, we're just going to repeal it. And uh, the Republicans have been very adamant about trying to repeal Obamacare. Definitely pros and cons to it. You know, everyone has their right to be on whatever part, you know, whatever side of Obamacare they want. Um, but they've always said they want to repeal it, which is okay, fine. Uh, they've kind of changed their rhetoric to now be repeal and replace, mainly because all of the plans that they had to just repeal it makes millions of people not have health care, which means I would be super nervous to walk around because if I fall down and break my arm, I'm screwed because then I don't have health insurance. So, uh, which as a YouTuber, again, I'm lucky because I have a full-time job that takes care of my health, health insurance, but I can only imagine all of the YouTubers out there who are genuinely worried about this because that's how they get health insurance. Uh, so that's one of the biggest issues that's coming up. So for all of you guys out there, call your Congress people. We did this last week. Literally, all you have to do, type into Google, what is my congressman's phone number? First thing that comes up is their, their office phone number, and you just call them, and they say, hi, how's it going? Um, I, I think the best thing about last week was that I got to, you know, I got to, pra I got to call a bunch of times, and now I'm kind of starting to get used to it because I was really nervous on the first one. Um, but I called, and I was just like, hey, uh, you know, I think that this is kind of an issue. I would like to please urge my con and you can say it literally that way. I would please love to urge the congressman to vote no on blah or yes on blah. And then they say, that's great. What zip code do you live in? And then they tally you and then that's it. And that's that. Voila. That's it. Um, so defending Obamacare and the ACA. ACA, for those of you guys who know, Affordable Care Act, also the same thing as Obamacare. That took me, I'm not going to lie, it took me a few years into Obamacare actually being passed for me to realize that those are the same thing. <laughs> so talk about marketing. Um, what, are they, what plan are they going to replace it with then? That's a funny question. Funny you ask that. Um, for <laughs> until the last couple of weeks, uh, they didn't have a plan. They just kept saying repeal and replace and then didn't have a replace. Uh, and they said that, oh, we can replace it in like a couple years. And you're like, what? <laughs> That's not how that works. You can't get rid of something and then say, I'll fix it in two years. It's like jumping out, I, I forgot, some nightly news host said it was like jumping out, of a, jumping out of a plane, leaving the parachute behind and saying, I'll figure it out in two years. We'll replace it with something in two years. By that, by that time, you've hit the ground and you're already, you're already a pancake. Um, now apparently, and I have not read too much into these, that's something that's totally Googleable, and I highly recommend you do that. I'll probably do that too, and I'll probably try and share that with you guys. A lot of the plans, from what I've heard, only a cursory look, ha they, the biggest problem is that they still don't cover a lot of people. They just, millions of people don't get health insurance, even with the replacement ideas that the Republicans have been putting out. So... I don't know what to say to them other than guys you you need if you want to replace it fine if you want to put more money into it fine you want but you can't leave these people who have had health insurance now and not given health insurance you just can't or at least that's what I'm going to fight for that's what I'm calling my congressman about highly recommend you guys do the same thing particularly if you guys are out there who live in dish I'm I'm in a district that's heavily blue and my congressman is probably going to end up voting that way anyways because that's how he always votes uh, but I'm still going to call, and I'm still going to urge him to stand by that, and to stand by it fiercely, and to explicitly urge other people to do so as well. Uh, same thing for you guys. For, the, for So many people, I've realized, don't know that, like, so many of their districts are, like, really what's, it's called purple, which means you're kind of right in between red and blue. So call your congressman. They, 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 they literally check. They have, like, a little, they, they have a little tally mark. They're like, okay, someone called and said, hey, congressman, vote that way. And that's how they keep track of this stuff. That's how they vote. You just got to call them and say that. So call, particularly, particularly if you are in a district where your congressman is of a different party than you or if your congressman is in a place where uh, he was barely voted in, where it was a really tight, tight run race and there's a lot of Republicans and a lot of Democrats all in one space. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, secondly, so that was the first thing, Obamacare. Second thing, um, Supreme Court nomination. This one was a bit tougher for me to figure out what to, 
what to do with because I, th okay so Trump's Supreme Court nominee is um, Neil Gorsuch who uh, and this is so hard for me and I this is a problem I've had my entire life where I'm like he seems like a nice guy uh, but a nice guy doesn't mean that they can do the job does not completely different thing he can be super nice does not mean he can do the job um, he is replacing Antonin Scalia Antonin Scalia, for those of you guys who know, don't know, super right wing, always, always with the never, never, uh, never um, uh, holding corporations accountable uh, to mistakes they made, always with religious freedom laws that always end up discriminating against people who are LGBT or immigrants, um, always with essentially very, very right wing judge. Not a huge fan. Generally not a huge fan, particularly because if you want society to progress, oftentimes you need the law to be behind social movements because this country doesn't tend to agree on a lot of things. So you need the law to say this is going to happen and it's a good thing and we're going to, it's a progressive social issue and we need the courts to stand by that, particularly in a court that is going to possibly end up, who knows, when executive orders end up on the Supreme Court, we need to know that those judges are going to stand by the law and not just go with party. So we cannot have someone who is super right wing. We need a, mo I'm not even saying we need to get a liberal, we need a moderate. Merrick Garland was an option, just a thought. I'm sure if we offered him the position now, he would still be an option, but that's fine. It's fine, I'm not salty about it, it's fine. But seriously, we need a moderate. Call your Congress people. They, and if they're in the House, they're not. I don't think they. I don't think people in the House vote on on confirmations. I think that's just the Senate. Doesn't matter. Call them anyway. Call your senator. Call your call. Call your uh. Call your um uh uh, repo uh representative. Um seriously, there are ten thousand people who watch these videos. Uh, guaranteed that at least half of you are in places where you have Republican leadership. Call them. Pick up the phone. Call. Huge deal. We'll do that by the end of this video. It'll be great. Um, Lola says, wait, Alex, so now that Trump is president, is he going to take out the, is he going to take out the bomb stuff thing and remake it again? I don't even know what that's referencing, to be honest. Um, I have no idea what you mean by that. Uh, I always question everything he does because it doesn't seem to be super thought out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe clarify that question and I can answer it. Um, did you guys hear about the new National Security Advisor, right? Yeah, um, I just heard about it actually just before we started streaming. Uh, McCann, right? Uh, haven't looked too much into him, so I don't want to say all that much. From what I have heard, again, super cursory stuff is that, surprisingly, he is the more moderate of this group. Does not mean he is a, a moderate, but he is more moderate. So I am cautious about his appointment. We will see. I will do more research and I will get back to you guys. Definitely follow me on Twitter, uh, by the way. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter yet, go ahead. You can uh, follow the Brain Noms on uh, Twitter. It's in the description down below in which I tweet basically all day all sorts of good news stuff and I add my spin and opinion on them um, and my genuine thoughts on the happenings of the world so we can share those things together if you go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Also Instagram. Yay! I've been trying out new things, by the way, too, in terms of like uh, creating um, creating images, uh, which I'm really excited about. I want to, I want to see how I can use, uh, images and video to help kind of grow this community and grow how I am able to, uh, communicate information to you guys. Um, next up, so that's the, so that was the ACA and Trump's nominee for Supreme Court Justice. I personally am voting for the ACA. Like, do not, specifically the thing you say is do not defund Obamacare particularly because a lot of that is aimed at Planned Parenthood, which is not okay, not okay. And like women's healthcare coverage, not okay. Protect it. Secondly, his uh, Supreme Court nominee, Gorsuch, Gorsuch will not protect, I, I do not believe he will protect these things. Um, as smart as he is, m maybe, I, I think he will fall on party lines, unfortunately. Uh, I think because he is so far right and because how we have seen him historically rule on different decisions, I think he will fall on party lines and that terrifies me because that is a decision that will last for the rest of his life. That's 50 years I, I, or more, who knows? I could be bloody 60 by that time the guy is off the bench. And I need healthcare in between then. So 
work with me, people. Jesus. Um, and yeah, don't worry, guys. There's always there's always gonna be um there's gonna be a ton of uh, a ton of research uh, on on these people. Actually, I'm working with my local indivisible group. For those of you guys who are out there who don't know about your indivisible group, you guys should totally go and check them out because it's usually pretty damn cool. Um, I went to my first meeting and I'm working with a group of them now, actually on um, media and digital literacy. Uh, and one of the things that I'm helping put together is this really big document on good sources of information. So it'll literally list out the different websites and publications and like a sentence or two about their leanings and if they're like what you would call fake news or um, like real fake news, not, not I just want to call you fake news because you disagree with me, like real fake news or, uh, or not, right? Um, so like, a li I, I might consider actually seeing if I can share that publicly and I'll share that with you guys so you guys can look at that and say like, okay, I know that this is like a vetted publication that a bunch of people looked at and said, okay, this is legitimate and this is how I can tell it's legitimate. I can go through that myself and make sure that it's legitimate as opposed to just trusting all of these random news sources. Um, like an example, I think, I think about that all the time. I look at brain noms and I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I'm trying to be. How do I help people know that I'm not just making shit up? Uh, I let you guys know how I access my information so that you guys, you know, that transparency is how you can learn to trust me and the information I come up with. And by the way, you should be skeptical of all the things I'm saying. At the end of the day, I am still one person putting together all of this information and it's not my full-time job. I am doing this because I love it and because I genuinely hope to share a lot of information, but I hope if there's any one thing I can teach you guys, it's to be skeptical of the information people give you. So. I will hopefully be able to show you guys ways that you can make sure that information is accurate and that way you can make decisions on your own. So examples of that is like, I'll go through this document and I'll say like, okay, the BBC is, you know, uh, fairly centric, you know, really good information, you can trust this one. Uh, the Guardian, same thing. Um, the Economist, slightly right leaning, but also really good information. Um, Breitbart, not, not at all, even a little bit. Uh, info wars, not, do not, do not trust, uh, coming up with all sorts of information that isn't accurate. Um, let's see, Lola asks, um, another question, uh, do you think Trump is actually going to do anything about the nuclear deal? I assume you mean the nuclear, there are different parts of the nuclear deal, um, I assume you mean the one in Iran? Uh, I think he, I mean, I think he's gonna have a lot to do with it, what he does with it, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure of. Um, a part of me always tries to, to kind of do a game theory thing where you try and like plan out what they're gonna do. Um, but he's really erratic and I don't understand what his logic is. If I were to gander, um, I would say, I would actually probably look at Steve Bannon more and look at the way he's discussed things and I would bet you a lot of policy falls along those lines. Uh, due to Steve Bannon's point of view, I would assume we're going to have a lot to do with the nuclear deal, particularly in a way that tries to take away any and all ability of, for Iran to be involved in nuclear, n nuclear anything. I mean, nuclear, I, I mean, definitely in nuclear armament, but, uh, particularly in using nuclear power. Um, I assume they're going to try and basically just shut it all down. I am terrified that they would do that in a way that's hostile. Uh, like in a way that just sends planes over and bombs the shit out of a bunch of plants um, or sends in troops. Uh, I do genuinely worry about, and I mean, this is this is a sincere worry. I do worry that we would be at war with Iran. I do worry, worry that we would be at war with China, particularly with issues on the South China Sea and um, that little archipelago of islands that's over by like the Philippines. I forgot what it's called. I think it's called like the Saltly Islands or something or Slightly, Slightly, Slatly something. I just watched a video on it today. Vox did a really great piece on that, by the way. Highly recommend you guys check that one out uh, on the South China Sea. So I really do worry about the nuclear issues. But that is one of many, many issues that I take concern with right now. Third issue I take concern with, uh, Muslim and refugee ban. As someone who has a Muslim family, this is extremely, extremely concerning. Um, obviously you guys heard about the first time they did the EO, um, and just so you guys know, I just learned this, like everyone kept saying EO, and I'm like, what the hell is an EO? Why do they keep saying EO? Executive order, okay. So, AO means executive order. Um, when, uh, they, when they passed the first one, the federal 
court in uh, Washington said this is not constitutional. This it, I, we apply our law nationally. You cannot have this ban. It, it does it does not work. You cannot do this in America. <laughs> you cannot. So they went back and instead of fighting it in the, the Supreme Court, they're like, okay, erase, 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 erase. So they went and now they're putting together another one. So they're trying again and they're doing it again with different language. This time, from what I'm hearing. Maggie Haberman, who is a reporter at the New York Times, has a really great Twitter feed, by the way. I have her live tweet at, at my phone, which is basically how I keep up with a lot of the news. Um, she says her White House sources say that um, the uh, that the Muslim ban this time technically is going to be it's going to address green card holders and Syrian refugees in a different way and in a way that doesn't automatically shut them down. However, I'm still extremely, extremely skeptical. Um, and I'm sure they're going to try and roll it out in a way that's a little bit smoother as opposed to something that happens literally overnight and all the people, like security guards at the airports are like, wait, what? What do we do now? What's our job now? What? No one told me this. So um, I anticipate the way they're going to be addressing the Muslim ban is going to be a bit more along the lines of, okay, trying to make it a bit more constitutional, but still very nefarious. I firmly stand by that. That is a nefarious, nefarious idea, and it is designed, and the intent behind it is to be a Muslim ban. So I hope, and dear God, guys, donate to the ACLU. Donate to, like, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Donate to all of the lawyers who are out there fighting this good fight because I guarantee you they're going to try and slide this one in no one would like to hoping that no one notices and we're going to be watching and those lawyers are going to go there and they're going to have to go into court and say yes even though they made a few tweaks it does not mean it is any less harmful and it does not mean it is any less constitutional and it does not mean it is any less racist intent or not intent is not impact just because they didn't intend to be racist doesn't mean it wasn't and doesn't mean it doesn't stop families from coming home and it doesn't mean it doesn't stop kids from going to school or people being terrified to leave the country because they don't know if they can get in so i'm calling my senators i'm calling my congress people to oppose whatever the heck they put out I, there is literally i can imagine no possible way that they could put out this kind of a travel ban and i would be okay with it i i i, I, I sat on that i'm like okay what is a possible way i was trying to think of it from their side Okay, it's a national security issue, there's, but there's zero possible way I accept a travel ban like this because it doesn't actually address national security in the way they want it to. There are, I can think of three ways, if not, and I'm sure there are hundreds of ways people have thought about this, I can think of three ways off the top of my head to address national security in a way that would be more effective than this travel ban. You could put money, instead of just banning people, you could put more money into security. You could put more money, particularly, I don't know, biometric security. You could put more money into local city security. You could put more money into taking in refugees and taking care of them so they don't become radicalized and so they don't end up bombing the heck out of this country. That's a thought. Um, I firmly believe the way we, were go we are going about it is, and I forgot who said this quote, but it's a quote that always stuck with me, saying, we're making more terrorists than faster than we're killing them which is a really sad thought to think of in and of itself but it's also kind of true where it's like you're the way you are addressing these issues of extremism and by the way i am really not thrilled with the term radical islamic terrorism uh extremism as a general term because there is christian extremism there is they're literally every kind of i'm sure there you can find extremist nudists or something okay uh <laughs> There are extremists of every kind, and saying radical Islamic terrorism and targeting that is fundamentally racist, and it is fundamentally against the Constitution, and it is fundamentally an inaccurate representation of a people. You are grouping an entire religion with some bad eggs, and you cannot do that. We founded this country on that idea. 270, 250 years later, however, I don't even know how old this country is. We are still running an experiment in democracy, and you cannot do that. And I will call my congressman, and I will call my senator to affirm that. And I will donate to the ACLU. Again, even though I already donated, I'm donating again.
because every time I talk about it, it terrifies me. Anyways, bo <laughs> bottle flipping, table flipping, yep, that's totally right. Um, North Korea is also another issue. International issue, it's, you know what the most interesting thing about all of this is that it's really hard to balance uh, my nervousness about international issues with my immediate urgent concern about domestic issues. So there are a ton of international issues. The, the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the South China Sea issues, North Korea, uh, everything going on in Europe and Marine Le Pen and how that terrifies me, um, Hungary, Russia, oh my God. The list goes on and on, but that's all international. A part of me can only, I literally only have so much bandwidth that looking at this, <laughs> our, my own country, it's extremely difficult to look at this and say, okay, let's pay attention to our problems first. We'll get to everyone else's when we can. It's really frustrating, and that's probably the most frustrating thing about this administration is because I find it to be causing so many problems that, of course, they were already there, and of course, they needed to be addressed, but they exasperated these problems to this extreme degree to where it's almost impossible for me to pay attention to international policy right now because the country is going blarg. I'm, I'm very much trying to learn how to curse a little less like a sailor on this channel, but and that wasn't exactly the most articulate I could have been, but this country, and for the first time I understand when, every time I used to hear people say like, oh, the country's going down the tubes, and I'm like, ah, you're generalizing, calm down. But God, now I totally agree with that sentiment. This, as compared to six months ago, the country right now is objectively doing worse. Not thrilled about it. Um, <laughs> Um, speaking of which, um, other things to feel weird about. Um, and I've been trying to think about why this hasn't happened. Um, the, uh, everyone keeps asking about Donald Trump and his tax returns. And I used to kind of be like, you know what, I, I used to be a little less, I'm like, don't get me wrong, it was an important thing, but it wasn't necessarily a priority that I paid attention to. But as I, um... <laughs> Oh no, did we catch Did we catch a troll? I'm sure we caught a troll. I'm sure this channel is going to catch trolls really fast, considering it's a political channel. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Um, so there's Donald Trump and his tax returns, right? So uh, his, every, every time I hear, you know, there are a lot of people I really admire who talked about it a lot. And for a while I used to think it wasn't that big of a deal. But now that I've heard them discuss it over and over again, there is a, and now that we've seen ties to Russia only grow, it really does concern me that he has financial, uh, that he has, there's the possibility of him having significant financial interests tied to Russia in some way, which is seriously, seriously concerning considering they're a hostile government and considering that that means they have the opportunity to leverage power against our leaders which means that our leaders aren't going to make decisions for us. They're going to make decisions for them. And considering that is exactly what he campaigned on, it's very frustrating to see that. A part of me really wants to say, I'm like, look, if it's really not that big of a deal, like, you're not even the one who has to go get your own tax returns. It's not like you have to go online and get them yourself. You, all you literally have to do is tell an aide to go get your tax returns, and it would be done. That's it. Why? Why is it? Why is it such a big deal? Is it... A part of me questions, I'm like, okay, is it, an, is it an ego thing? Is it like someone challenged him about this, now he just on, on principle doesn't want to share them because someone told him he has to? Or is it, act and that would be fine, best case scenario, but I'm never going to know and I'm never going to be able to trust that. Um, God, who said this? I think, I want to say it was Ronald Reagan. Uh, Ronald Reagan said, and someone quote me, uh, or, or uh, tell me if I'm wrong with this quote, but they said, trust but verify. I want to trust people. I really fundamentally do. I do. I, I am an optimist. I do think the best of people. Um, I think when people make most of their mistakes, it isn't necessarily because they are being evil, but because they think what they're doing is uh, the part of, you know, the moral high ground, that there is some law of nature that says the decisions they are making are good. And I think the worst things that come out of people come from that point of view. And so when you think about that, it it makes you think that like okay where does he think he's coming from and how can we try and understand that and a part of me finds it so hard 
to look at Donald Trump and look at these issues of these tax returns and say, yeah, no, I'm supposed to just trust you? No, no, I haven't been able to trust you so far. So why would I trust you today? There is, there is this incredible dissonance between that. And I think the most interesting thing about this administration is that they, I, I th that's how they operate. It's, they operate in a way that is dissonant with time, <laughs> where six months ago, or bloody hell, where two weeks ago they would say something, or a couple hours they would say something, and then a couple hours later, a couple weeks later, a couple months later, they say the complete opposite. There is a dissonance between that time and what they've said before, and that does not work for the average person. I fundamentally, be, or it does not work for me, at the very least, in which case, this man needs to release his tax returns because I do not trust and I will continue to mistrust. And the longer he does not release these tax returns, I will have a growing mistrust of the fact that he has a, and I, and I am trying to be very careful with my phrasing here because obviously I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but there is a possibility that he has financial ties to hostile governments. He had massive corporations, uh, under his name, he and ma much of his cabinet had huge, huge investments internationally. It is not wild to consider that they still have those investments, that they're still aware of those investments, that other countries and other governments are fully aware of what those investments are, where they are, and how they can use them as leverage to persuade. <laughs> it's not the more, we're not as strong of a word as I'm thinking of persuade and intimidate, there we go, better word, intimidate our governments into making decisions that benefit them and their power and autocratic governments that do not represent the people and do not represent democracy. That is my rant, that is my rave, done with that. So those are your four issues of the week, ladies and gentlemen, and a possible way to debate them. I would, oh man, you know what would be great with this channel? One day I would love to have a second co-host who is uh, who would argue the other side where we can just have a debate almost like the intelligence squared podcast where we could have a debate on both sides uh, to really be able to fully flesh this out because I want you guys to be able to walk away from this live stream and say if I got in a debate today I know where I stand and I know how to I know how to intellectually protect myself and stand my ground and that's what I hope I can do for you guys um, oh hey everybody else who joined hey Agatha how's it going hey Sarah um Yes, so those are the top four things. Uh, defending Obamacare, uh, opposing Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court, opposing the Muslim ban, and uh, demanding that Trump release his tax returns. Four things to call your uh, Congress people about, four things to call your senators about. I'm gonna do it, let's do it together. Um, finally, one last thing I wanna discuss uh, in today's uh, stream. Um, and I know, isn't a debate a cool idea? Oh, gosh, one day, one day I will find a co- See, this is where, well, actually, if you guys, again, it, it's the kind of thing where it's like, if I was able to do this full time, if you guys have the ability, definitely donate on Patreon, make it a recurring donation, let me, it lets me know how much support I have on a regular basis, because then I can start to do these things full time, then I can start to bring on other people to do this, because I'm not kind of doing this ad hoc in the middle of the night, uh, but I can bring someone else and say, like, let's debate this together, let's make this a regular thing, let's see how we can help people respond to the news to know that we can provide news that is designed to help you be active, not just inundate you with sad facts, but saying, this is what happened and here's what you can do about it and we will do it together. How do we activate all of us here? Uh, even though it's just 10 of us here right now, how do we activate all of us in a way? Because I know we have that curiosity. I know we have that engagement. All of us are paying attention. None of you guys would have been here for 45 minutes, if not from the last stream for an hour and 45 minutes, if you did not think what I was saying was valuable in some way. So I firmly believe we could do that together. Um, and yeah, Greggles, you're totally right. Maybe one day we could totally just do a, a Skype debate. Maybe, um, I mean, one of the things I would love to do is later on do uh, like live streaming, um, like, like live streaming Skype debates actually and doing it with you guys and having you guys call in, ask questions. Um, maybe one day I would do that. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll like buy burner phones or something and like you guys can call in and oh my God, it'll be like, a, it'll be like an online radio show. You guys can call in with your questions uh, and start talking and we can um, discuss together. That's an interesting idea. I'll put that one on the back burner. 
What a cool idea. That's fun. Um, last, I, last thing I want to say, though, um, so again, uh, this week is the congressional recess. For those of you guys who don't know, the congressional recess literally means that um, the, all of the Congress people, they get presidents, they don't just get presidents day off, they get presidents like a week or two off. I don't remember if it's like a week or two, but it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like 10 days or something. Um, and they all scurry on over from Capitol Hill. They go back to their districts and they go and they, you know, they kiss babies and they like do town halls and they like go and they're, they're supposed to like check in on their constituents. And obviously they do other stuff. They go fundraise. They do, you know, whatever, uh, you know, address local issues that they need to do and make sure that they get reelected. That's fine. That's their job. Mainly, the biggest thing to remember here, and the thing I want to say, because someone, my friend stopped me, and she's like, Alex, you're expecting too much from these people. And I, I, I paused for a second, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I, I, don't think I am. Particularly, and in, in this case, um, what we were talking about is that my congressman is not doing a town hall. Congress, uh, congressman Michael Capuano uh, in Massachusetts is not doing a town hall. And I'm like, okay, fine, you know, maybe he just did one. Or maybe, um, maybe there's one coming up soon. Um, you know, right? I, like, I guess it doesn't have to be in this week, although uh, you have a week off from work, so isn't, and it's designed for you to talk to your constituents, so isn't that the point? So that's fine, whatever. So I call his office, and his office tells me that, uh, oh, we don't remember when the last time. He did it like a while ago. And it was like a couple months, like, like a significant period of time ago. And I was like, okay, when's the next one? There have been a lot of changes in the last couple of months. I have questions. Uh, and they're like, meh, April? And I'm like, what? You can't say meh, maybe April, and expect that to be an okay answer. I'm not asking for the moon. I'm not asking for the stars. Uh, I understand that it is scary for them. <laughs> there are people who are coming up to them and who are probably going to be angry. Um, or, oh, not even angry, but just re respectfully hard-nosed about questions. Uh, and there are, you know, setting up a location, I guess, is hard. I don't know. Actually, I was talking to my friend, and then she's like, it's hard. It takes forever to set these things up. And a part of me is like, I guess. But, like, I don't know what you need other than a space and maybe some microphones. Or, I mean, and I'm honestly, I'm like, you don't even need that because it's incredibly hard to get there. So, like, what if you just live streamed it? What if you live streamed a town hall? Um, I feel like that's not that hard, right? I live stream on a weekly basis, and it's not even my job. So, uh, again, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I'm not considering, but I don't think it's unreasonable to say during the time that you're on recess, when you're at home and your job is to talk to your constituents, talk to them. You have one job. <laughs> Do that, and I get it. I know you have to talk to fundraisers, and I know you have to make money, and I know you have to – I get it. And I, and I know you want to spend time with your family and take your kids to soccer practice. I get it, but – this is also a part of your job. If you expected a nine to five, you shouldn't have been a politician. And I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to say. Some jobs are tough. This is a tough job. You, th th this is not news to you. You should expect this. And when people ask for a town hall, you're gonna be damn right that they're gonna make you look like a fool if you don't have a town hall. So, in which case, some other people were telling me some things saying, uh, and guys, nothing happened, literally nothing happened in Sweden. Literally, Sweden, like, called and said, we don't know what you're talking about, it's slain. It, was the, it, had, it had no bearing on anything. Um, but uh, I thought it was super interesting because a friend of mine said, well, what's the point in calling, what's the point in stressing your congressman out um, uh, about having a town hall if he's already a Democrat and you're a Democrat, right? Or, and vice versa, right? Or if, like, if I was a Republican and they were already a Republican. And I thought about it for a second, and I'm like, I guess, you're right. I mean, I guess they should be spending their time on other stuff. But at the same time, also no. <laughs> also no. It doesn't matter if we're just of the same party. I still have questions. I'm still a constituent. It doesn't mean I'm going to go there and, like, berate you and disagree with you on everything, but I am going to continue to urge you to keep promoting your ideas, and you should know that I am here urging you to stay on that side. Um... And not just that, I, I feel like there are a lot of people out there, you get kind of lazy. You get, like, everybody does. You get a little comfortable. You're like, oh, I'm safe. I'm in a safe district. I'm, my district always goes blue. It always goes red. I, I'm the only Democrat or Republican who ever runs. So, like, I'm fine. And that bugs me. That feeling of comfort that they have bugs me. 
because they take that sense of security and everybody does i do you know i do this i'm sure you do this everybody does when you have a sense of security you tend not to fight as hard which in some times it's okay sometimes things are a little less urgent now is not one of those times so now is a time when there needs to be a town hall congressman capuano have a town hall please sir we are a i'm sure you're not going to watch this but please sir uh we have many questions even if it's just a live stream throw me a comment shoot me a tweet i will help you set up this live stream i'm happy to contribute to help you talk to your constituents i'm sure many people would be incredibly appreciative but this is important now is a time where it doesn't matter if we are on the same side we need to make sure we are on the same goddamn page okay i need to not only know i need to expect that you are going to fight tooth and nail against everything the administration is doing right now. That is how I stand, and I as your constituent need to say that to you, and I can only do that through a town hall because I am not faxing your office a letter because it's not because it is not 1980s. Ugh, gosh. Anywho, guys, that's all I have to say for today's uh, brain no, I'm Sorry I've missed out on a, a couple of your guys' comments. Feel free to throw in your questions now. Throw in them questions. I will answer them as much as I can. Any questions you have on politics, any questions um, of stuff you would like me to address this week, particularly things you might be curious about. Um, I know I don't, have, I don't have all the answers, but it always starts with a question. And when you have a question, you can do a bit more research and you can learn a bit more. And I can come back to this in the next live stream. And I can share with you guys all those answers and um, I can tweet out the answers to all of these things you guys have. So if you guys have any questions, ask some questions before we wrap this guy up. Um, what the heck is wrong with Sweden, Tiffany? No, nothing. Real, well, I, I mean, I actually, you know what, maybe I'll take that. I, I don't know, in ter like, in that I don't keep up with Swedish politics, but they seem to be doing, like, okay. They have a solid education system, uh, socialized medicine. Um, I think they have a high minimum wage and a, is Sweden one of those countries that does a, um, a bracket where everyone makes a certain amount of money? I want to say yes. I feel like a Sweden would do that, but I'm not 100% sure. So I feel like they're doing okay. Um, <laughs> what the hell is he smoking? Sweden's former Trump about, <laughs> Sweden's former PM about Trump. Really? That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. I would, wait, do you have a source for that? I would love, <laughs> I would love to see that. I, I, I hope that's an actual thing. The atomic bombing of Stockholm did say, uh, did happen. And anyone who says it didn't happen is fake news. Agatha, that's. That I'm, I'm assuming that's total sarcasm, but that's very funny. That is very, very funny. Ikea fell into madness. When Ikea was gone, the country was doomed. Um, thoughts on NATO. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, Agatha. Um, that, I mean, that's a very broad question. Uh, to just, to, I, just to make it a bit more granular, if I were to say my thoughts on the structure of NATO, um, like I think it's – I think it's – and I, I don't want to be so broad. I mean – it's a broad question, so I guess it, it, uh, it evokes a broad answer. I, I, I mean, I like NATO. It was made to make sure, post-Cold War, that Russia did not go ahead and start encroaching and annexing things like, I don't know, Crimea, uh, to start going ahead and pushing its boundaries. Um, my concerns of coming with NATO is that we are not going to, like, if Trump decides to, I don't know, pull out of NATO, I guess, which I don't even understand quite how that happens or who has that power to do that. Um, but the fact that I don't know is concerning. Um, if he decides to, let's say, let's say he could just say we're out of NATO and then we are. Um, that's extremely concerning because we are, the, we, are the back, we are the military backbone of NATO. If you attack a NATO country, it's like attacking the United States and we are by like contractually obligated to step in, which is why Russia has kind of been like, meh, meh, Schmeagel, meh, wanting countries and wanting power, but not actually being able to move into it because of the United States, blah. And it's weird to look at that because, you know, I grew up uh, taking history classes where like NATO is this amazing thing that we cheer on and it's like, wow, look at the United States being so heroic and basically being the big brother to save all of these little countries. Um, and in a way, you know what, I, I don't want to say I'm an expert on like NATO history. Um, I'm not, certainly. My understanding of it, though, is that without the United States' full involvement and backing of NATO, Russia feels like the big brother is gone. And it feels like all of these little guys, it can kind of just move in on, uh, suddenly don't have the protection that they were promised. And 
that concerns me, right? Not just not just because of like, oh, they can, you know, oh, okay, they just took Crimea. I guess it's just a piece of land. It's like, no, they're moving into places where there are lots of natural resources. Also places where they could establish power. You can, I mean, you can see this. China's doing the same thing in the South China Sea, right? You're build, they're building islands in resource-rich areas so that they can call and claim that land theirs. That is a slow moving of territory, and that is very terrifying because later on, the places they move, like Crimea, has incredible natural resources, like natural gas resources, specifically like oil. When you have oil, oil producing countries make a lot of money because we all use oil for everything. We have this incredible addiction to it. So he will continue to start moving and taking over places that are strategic to him, that are either places where he can put military bases, uh, which means he's gonna be putting warships and uh, fighter pilots, places that make me nervous because if we ever did go to war with them, he has a better, he will have, he will be better suited to hurt us, which is not cool. Uh, he will be mo going to places where he can take over natural resources, um, meaning he could bolster his economy and therefore create more weapons. Also very concerning. So I think the United States needs to stand by NATO. Uh, I say that, of course, with like the small caveat that I am not an expert, only with my minimal understanding of it. Do I know that we need to stand behind NATO because Russia will be making more aggressive moves without it? And that makes me really nervous. I'm not a big fan. Um, Alex, check your Twitter DM. Okay, why? What are we checking? What are we checking? Okay, checking. Let's see. Other questions. Dun, dun, dun. I asked earlier, but for the indivisible meetings. Oh, Diana, great question. For the indivisible meetings, do you have to be a certain age to attend? Nope. You can go whatever age, 14 is an awesome age. Actually, a lot of times, different indivisible groups aim at different people of different ages so they can try and get people as active as possible. My friend is in one in New York right now where they're actually putting together materials specifically for college and high school kids so that they can educate themselves on how to be involved even though they might be underage. So no, you can go to whatever indivisible group you want and chances are I would bet you that indivisible group would be super, super, super welcoming. So I really, really recommend you go. Maybe even bring your parents, bring your friends, go with a group, um, go ask questions. I, be I bet you they're gonna be cool about it. I promise you they'll be cool about it. Um, so it's okay that you're 14. The fact that you're even asking is awesome. Um, and send me pictures when you go because I wanna see because that's so cool. Um, Next question and other t uh, other Twitter DMs. Um, let's see. Uh, did I miss a da 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 da? Um, oh, hang on. I'm in the gamer at live sh or gamer at Twitter. One sec, one sec, one sec. Getting on Twitter. Brain numb. Login. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, and by the way, I uh, don't know if I've already said this, but in case I didn't, go ahead and follow Brain Numbs on Twitter. You can catch up on all of the news and all of my thoughts about the news on the Brain Numbs Twitter, as well as on, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, as well as on Instagram. Oh, Agatha, let's see. The comment section of at Brain Numbs live stream is great, lol. Thanks for a great time. Ah, that's adorable. I like how my face is caught at, like, <laughs> wait, why does it say the mayhem at Ikea? What? Not Ikea? The heck is wrong with Sweden? <laughs> California has the floods like crazy. This is all true. Um, that was a great, that was a, that was, that's actually a really great screenshot. I love that. That's amazing. Wait, I'm retweeting that. That's amazing. It is great. Oh, Agatha, thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> check your Twitter DM for the source. Oh, thank you, Greggles. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, I love hearing news from you guys. Whenever you guys tell me things, definitely make sure to send me the sources. I'm trying to challenge myself to be a bit more rigid with trusting information unless I know it comes from a good source. So, I mean, there are a ton of sources out there. Um, that are incredibly, incredibly, uh, uh, just, just awesome, uh, like do, doing amazing analysis of the news um, and getting just really hard hitting journalism, which is what we absolutely need right now. Here, I, I actually wrote down a list of uh, some of mine that like these are the ones that I read uh, either every day or I um, follow them all on Twitter. I keep up with all of them. You'll find that I'm probably retweeting a lot of them. Uh, because I think they do really great uh, news. But if you guys want to know, the the, the publications that I trust, and this is only some, um, I'll probably be doing, again, I'll be probably writing out that whole document of like cool, safe news to know that you can trust. 
Um, but the way I do it, and I, and I, by the way, I also subscribe to these. Support what you love with your dollars. Um, give a subscription. If you're reading their content and it's good content, give them a subscription. It helps them do better journalism, and it helps them make sure if they're jerks in office that they don't end up being jerks to you. <laughs> Um, so the ones I read are, let's see, the Washington Post, I love. They do really solid investigative pieces, um, especially lately. Um, the Hill, which I have only just learned is technically conservative-leaning, but you don't really feel it. Um, they, they do a really solid balance, I think. I, I consider the Hill to be pretty balanced, um, even though they technically fall a little conservative. Um, Slate, I think, does amazing analysis pieces, especially ones that have to do with, like, bigger picture trends. Um, I also listen to their podcast, the Slate Political Gab Fest, which is pretty fun. Uh, the New York Times, Politico, well, The Atlantic does really cool longer pieces that are really fun. Um, and The Atlantic also tends to have more personal pieces, so you'll get pieces from, like, um, you'll get, a, like, a reporter from Russia talking about what it was like, you know, in her life, you know, growing up in an, uh, with an autocrat, right? Um, the Financial Times is pretty good, uh, specifically for finance stuff. I always love The Guardian. I've always had a soft spot for The Guardian, particularly because I think they do amazing advertising. <laughs> One of my favorite ads of all times was, uh, was The Guardian doing the, th they did like this live, weird live action of like the three little pigs with like this awesome CGI. And it says, and the whole tagline was like, they tell, The Guardian tells the whole story. And it told, tells the whole story of the three little pigs, and you realize the three little pigs murdered the big bad wolf, and they framed him, and, uh, you know, because of the Guardian's reporting, the three little pigs were arrested because they were awful and were trying to commit insurance fraud or something. Uh, it was a really fantastic ad. It was only, like, a minute or two, but it's one of my favorite ads of all time. Uh, so I love the Guardian, and they do amazing work. Um, foreign policy is also great for international stuff. Forbes, Newsweek, The Economist, Time, The Wall Street Journal, The New Yorker. And then, because I'm a gamer at heart, Game Informer, PC Gamer, Game of Sutra, TechCrunch, Recode, Polygon, IGM, The Verge, and of course, again, also the Associated Press. And BuzzFeed News is growing on me. It is growing on me. I, I have seen, I actually got the lucky chance to see inside BuzzFeed's newsroom. Um, and I do see, like, the high caliber that they, of journalism that they hold themselves to, especially on the news end. Uh, so I respect that. I respect that, and... Um, I'm very, you know, it's definitely growing on me. I wouldn't say that's where I got all of my information, um, but if I do see something on BuzzFeed and it's corroborated on another, uh, on another site I trust, then um, yeah, I, I usually stick by that one. Um, let's see, other stuff. Um, and then of course video. I think Vox does awesome video stuff. I think I've, I've learned s most, like so the stuff about the South China Sea, I've learned most of what I, uh, uh, most of like the more detailed stuff about these uh, particular issues, mainly through Vox. They've done amazing, and because it's so visual, because they tell a really great story, um, that's how I learn. So I think they've done a really great job about that. And there are, of course, also other great stuff like uh, CNN and The Great Big Story, Al Jazeera, C-SPAN, also super underrated. I know it's boring. I know a lot of people think it's boring um, because, like, it's not quite analysis. It's just, like, literal footage of what's happening uh, inside uh, Capitol Hill. But right now, that's really freaking fascinating. So I've actually, like, there have been times where I just keep C-SPAN on and I just watch C-SPAN like an old person. <laughs> But on that note, gamers and, uh, oh, gosh. Uh, on that note, can you tell? <laughs> Gotta break a habit. Uh, on that note, all you guys, all you happy nerds and all you curious folk out there, thank you guys so much. I'm gonna end this Brain Nom stream right out there. As always, guys, uh, like, subscribe, share these videos, and, of course, comment in the comment box down below. Anything you want to see next time, questions you have, things you want me to look up for you that we can maybe have a discussion about next time. So stay tuned, and, of course, if you can, Again, vote with your dollars. Uh, go ahead and support the Brain Noms channel. Uh, the closer, the more, I mean, the more we can do that, the more I can actually get to doing this full time and getting to more of that hard hitting stuff I want to actually be able to comment on and research and do it with more people. So go ahead and support the Brain Noms channel as much as possible. Everything is in the description down below, as well as Twitter and Instagram if you guys are so inclined to follow. And of course, guys, I love you, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode. Stay happy, nerds. That's a good ending. Is that a good ending? I don't know. It's growing on me. We'll have to experiment with more endings. Hmm. Guys, on that note, I'm going to leave it there. We'll see you guys all in the next episode. Bye-bye.